Welcome back. It is still me here. <laughs> I had mentioned that I was coming, but it seems that I'll be holding down this conversation on youth and politics. And uh, we have an interesting uh, discussion coming uh, your way. And uh, to help us with this will be Timothy Mwanda, who's an advocate of the High Court of Kenya practicing in Nairobi. Timothy. Yes, Karibu sana. Thank you. So Am much. I supposed to say my learned friend? <laughs> no, because you're not learned. Ah, I'm okay. Learned. <laughs> I mean, why did... Is it, a, a, is it a, like um, a thing? Is it something that is there in the books? Or is it just a language you came up with as advocates and lawyers? No, it's a language that has been there. Okay. It's the old tradition and it's used by colleagues to uh, call each other. Okay, it's used by colleagues. Not, uh, not anyone can... It can't be used... <laughs> but hazardly. Yes, thank okay. you. Yes. All right. So we want to talk about politics. What is making news in Kenya? Let's start with the uh, stage set for Supreme Battle. Yes. What do you make of it? Today is the seventh day till the Judgment Day, which will be next Monday. So what do you make of the process that has been so far? Um, the process that has been so far mm -hmm. has gone on well. As you know... Um, the petition has timelines. Mm -hmm. The constitution under Article 138, it provides for 14 days. Today is the day that parties are going to make rejoinders and any interlocutory applications. Pre-trial is set for tomorrow. The Registrar of the Supreme Court is going to issue a notice to all parties to get prepared for the pre-trial that is coming up tomorrow. Mm -hmm. The pre-trial, what means, is whereby parties and the court agree on the issues to tackle. Thereafter, the uh -huh. proceed. You said the parties and the courts agree on issues to tackle? Yes, yes, okay. on what issues will be determined mm -hmm. in the petition. Okay. Some issues will be thrown out. This is where the court will now zero in on the issues because they don't have time. So do they work together with the parties to zero into the issues or the courts just decide on their own from the petitions that they have gotten? No, they work together. Okay. Yes. Okay, with both parties? All parties. Mm -hmm. You know that the petitioners are nine and they're also the respondents mm -hmm. who this time round I'm shocked, the commissioners and also the commission itself together mm -hmm. with the president-elect. Okay. Yes. All right. So that is said to happen tomorrow. Today. Uh huh. Oh, the today. The pre-trial is today, and then thereafter, mm -hmm. the hearing kicks off. Okay. Yes. So the hearing will be on from tomorrow, going forth. Um, we stand will be directed by the court. It might even start today. Okay. Because you know they are working with time. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because by mo by Monday they're supposed to give a verdict. Yes. On what will happen. Yes. All right. So how so far? How do you see it going? What, what, are your, what are some of the things that you are taking from it, from the petitions that have been given and the respondents are giving back their response? So far, um, uh, we've seen uh, different petitions coming up. It has never been there before. Mm -hmm. And the other thing we've seen, uh, the two different factions of IBC. We've seen one faction of the of mm -hmm. the chairman being led by uh, my senior counsel, Gidhu Mwigai. On the other side, we've also seen the faction that the four commissioners splitted being represented with another, with another firm of advocate. This has never been there. We are waiting to see if the court, how will it rule on that, on representation. Mm -hmm. We're also going to see how these affidav affidavits will be admissible before the court. Because some of them, mm -hmm. in... in uh, in the plain language that you've seen, even with the bribery claims and stuff, are they admissible in court? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, all right. So these are some of the things that we're expecting to see. And uh, that will be on from uh, tomorrow. Yes. Okay. And what about, I understand that the LSK wanted to be friends of the court. So how does that work? Okay. Um... Uh, Friends of the court, in the other term, it's called amicus curiae. Mm -hmm. what, what, what they come to assist, they come to assist the court to determine issues. Mm -hmm. But uh, let me bring you to speed. We've seen uh, the, the, 
the, the advocates representing the president-elect, they have filed a grounds of opposition to challenge them being admitted as a friends of the court. The reason they are saying so is because mm -hmm. um, LSK is, is just an artificial body. And according to the decided cases in the Supreme Court, for you to become a friend of the court, you need to have assisted mm -hmm. the court uh, earlier on and you know the issues. So the president-elect, through his advocate, they've challenged that application by the Law Society of Kenya. Okay. Yes. So it has not yet been approved? Not yet. Not we yet. are still waiting to hear from what, what from the courts if it decides to to take them in. Are there other, f uh, you've, you've said the word is Ami? Ami Kaskure. Ami Kaskure. Are yes. there other other bodies that have come to, you know, to be friends of the court, Ami Kaskure? Um, so far, I've not seen any application. Mm -hmm. Last time we had the Attorney General. This time, I've not seen the application in court. Okay. Yes. So, what would you, what do you think generally will be made out of this, uh, despite the decision that will be arrived at uh, with the court on Monday? Do you think this will strengthen our our electoral body at the end of it, or is it just something that will will see a repeat of maybe in the next five years again? Because we have seen. Uh, this is not the first time uh, that uh, the electoral body has been taken to court because of issues to do with the election. Um, let, me, let me answer that question in three ways. Mm -hmm. One, from uh, the legal perspective, we expect our jurisprudence to grow. By that, in 2013, the election was upheld. In 2017, it was nullified. In 2022, the decision that will be made will have made our jurisprudence to go, to grow in, in mm -hmm. different ways. Some of the issues which were raised in 2013, 2017, they are not in 2022. Mm -hmm. new, new, new issues are coming up. Mm -hmm. In the layman's language, um, the issues that are going to be determined, it's only two. Is the election valid or invalid? Invalid. When, when we look at the professionals now, the professionals are looking at how competent is the commission. That's, that's what most of the professionals are looking at. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And, and from still on that, um, what, what is the possible, what are some of the possibilities that will come out, out of this? Because uh, the Azimio team are expecting that the court will decide, you know, to th they're ex actually expecting that they will be sworn in as president that will be announced that they actually won the election and uh, uh, the, the other side, the other team UDA is expecting that uh, it will uh, nul not nullify, sorry, it will actually up uphold the election. So w what are the possibilities that stand? Um, the, poli the possibilities that will stand mm -hmm. is one and article 138 the Supreme Court can either validate the election, mm -hmm. two, it can also invalidate and order for a repeat election within 60 days. But now, when you go to the Elections Act under Section 80, mm -hmm. we see that um, uh, the court has power to announce a winner. It, it orders the commission to issue the winner with a certificate. However, uh, mm -hmm. there, are some, uh, there are some, I think, three petitions that were filed last week on whether Section 85 is constitutional because the people have issued their, they have spoken through their votes. If the court comes and issues another person with a certificate, then it means um, uh, the people's will has been changed. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so uh, we wait to see on how that will turn out. And speaking of the I, the commissioners split, does this hold ground or does it hold water for the Azimio team who have uh, taken the petition to court? Does it hold water for them now that they have the sort of a backup from the commissioners that there that was not there's some opaqueness as they say it in the election I mean vote counting um, 
during the BBA case, we saw mm. the issue of uh, the three commissioners, whether it is constitution constitutionally mandated mm -hmm. to sit. The Supreme Court held that three, uh, the three commissioners were valid and um, they stand to be, the, the commission is fully. Now, the four, the four do not have, there is no any legal challenge that is going to be raised. The only legal challenge I see it being raised mm -hmm. is, was there a decision that was made by the, by the co commission? Because when you look at the constitution, it says that before a presidential election is announced, mm -hmm. the commission has to sit down and make a decision. Mm -hmm. So did they sit down and make a decision? If the three of them sat then, the commission sat fully. But th does it not need the commissioners to be all of them, seven, or at least a majority, for them to make a decision? I think, I think that's, that's one of the issues before the court. Okay. Yes, so that we are looking for it to be determined. All right. Uh, still, uh, a lot of things happening still on the matters election and the Supreme Court battle. We've had um, uh, secrets coming out, or if I can put it like that, especially between uh, Rafael Tuju and the chair of IBC, Wafula Chebukati. What do you make of this? Um, uh, the secrets are coming out. So I think, I think um, the main issue that will be determined in court mm is whether are this evidence admissible before court. Okay. Because there are some things that once uh, they are said, mm -hmm. they, ca they cannot be taken as evidence in court. So we are waiting to see on that. The other thing we are waiting to see is, is uh, proving of this uh, evidence since there is no time. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so what what will it take for does it take for an evidence to be admissible, such in such a, a case? Uh, in you, you see right now, the issue before the court, it's the timelines. Mm -hmm. The timeline is so short, that's why even evidence is not taken mm -hmm. by affidavit. It's taken viva voce. Um, you see, in these other court hearings, we usually see witnesses coming to court, mm -hmm. they get cross-examined, and f and etc., uh, etc. Et 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 but for this one, you just do affidavits, and where there are some issues, you'll be calling for cross-exam or re-exam, mm -hmm. depending on the directions of the court. So, admissibility of evidence we is usually looked at under the Evidence Act. There are some things which are not admissible. Mm -hmm. For example, if you're my client and you come and confide in me, I cannot share that evidence before the court. Mm -hmm. It is not admissible. Okay. All right. Yes. Very quite interesting. And moving away just a bit from uh, Mate's Supreme Court, the Supreme Court battle, we have uh, the elections that are taking place today. That is in Mombasa and Kakamega. That is after a three-week wait. And the uh, security agency assured residents of safety on ballot day in delayed gubernatorial elections in two counties and uh, so, so on and so forth. What do, you, what do you make of these elections that are, are to take place today and being a tight, uh, you know, a tight race between the governor aspirants? Um, uh, we've never seen this happening before. Mm -hmm. Postponement of uh, an election. Uh, what 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 I'm looking forward is um, will they be fair? Will they be credible? And will the will of the people be upheld? Mm -hmm. As you can see, um, uh, in we have the gubernatorial elections in Mombasa and in Kakamega. We also have the five constituencies uh, yeah. elections. Mm -hmm. You're waiting to see, and it also um, it's also very important to note that, mm -hmm. for example, for the for the uh, MP elections, the five will determine who will hold the majority and who will hold the minority mm -hmm. in parliament. 
Okay. Yes. All right. And uh, still on, on this, the gubernatorial uh, elections taking place today. And just to mention before uh, we continue with that, the <coughs> sorry, the elections being held today in with the constituencies we have uh, Nyaki, uh, that is, sorry, Kitui Rural Constituency, uh, Kacheliba Constituency, that is in West Pokot County. We have Pokot South Constituency. We have uh, Rongai Constituency, that is Nakuru County. We have Nyaki West Ward, that is in North Imenti Constituency, Mary County. And uh, Kwanjenga Ward, that is Embakasi South Constituency, Nairobi County. And uh, yeah, of course, the gubernatorial elections in Kakamega County and Mombasa County. Now, uh, back to you on uh, the elections that are taking place. We had the Azimio leader, you know, uh, filing a, a petition in court again, asking that uh, Chebukati, the chair, should not oversee these elections that are to take place. So having th that there is no response so far, so what will happen? Um, uh I've not seen that that has been filed. What what mm -hmm. what uh, the right honourable did? Mm -hmm. He said that while he was in a public gathering, okay. and Chebukati cannot mm -hmm. uh, oversee the elections. There are county returning officers mm -hmm. in Mombasa and in Kakamega who were gazetted to be in charge of those elections. Mm -hmm. When we look at also the MP elections and the MCA elections, they are, they are officers who are gazetted. So the, 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 the work of uh, Mr. Chebukat and the commission is to just facilitate by providing the ballot boxes and everything. But the one who is in charge legally are the county returning officers who have been gazetted. Okay. All right, uh, quite interesting there. And what about uh, when we talk about the Na Nairobi uh, governor, uh, that is Johnson Sakaja, what happens now to NMS as uh, he's expected? He's, uh, he, sa he said that he would not work with NMS, and I have that story uh, here. Uh, NMS to surrender county tasks as Sakaja takes over. So what would, now what would happen? How do you see this turning out? I, I first wish to congratulate mm -hmm. my new governor, mm -hmm. Governor Sakaja. What um, the county government is established under Article 176 of the Constitution and mm -hmm. also the County Government Act. So by dint of him being sworn in, mm -hmm. constitutionally and legally, NMS has died. And mm -hmm. it is now upon them to transfer powers because NMS came up when mm -hmm. Governor Sonko and um, the office of the president, mm -hmm. when they made uh, an agreement to transfer factions under the schedule in the constitution. Mm -hmm. Now now that that term of Governor Sonko ended mm -hmm. after, after Governor Sakaja was sworn in, mm -hmm. then it means Governor Sakaja is going to take up and steer up the county into the new face that he has promised us. Okay, so where does NMS go? It dies from there? Yes, it dies. Okay, all right. Some of the things that are happening. And uh, some of the achievements that I see here from NMS is that they have, NMS has, has been renovating and constructing houses in colonial Era, Bahati, Maringo, Jericho, Lumumba, Bondeni, Ziwani, Mbakasi, California, Kariobange North, and Woodley Estates. Um, in a bit to decongest CBD, six Tamini, where city bound matatus will drop and pick passengers are in the final stages of completion. Just to get your opinion, do you think NMS has done enough work in the county, the time it has been of service? Yes, it has done enough work, mm -hmm. though it has not been sufficient okay. for the people of Nairobi. Mm -hmm. For example, um, the terminal that have been built, the green bus, the green park bus terminal, mm -hmm. it is, it is, there are some challenges that people have been facing. For example, how are you going to pick, how is, how is a sick person going to travel from the green, pass, green park uh, bus terminal let's say to hospital in Aga Khan. Mm -hmm. He or she is used to coming in town mm -hmm. and then take a matatu to Aga Khan. How, how is 
he or she going to commute. But fairly, they've done a good job. Yeah. They've uh, helped. Um, uh, they've provided good services to the people of Nairobi. And we are grateful to General Mbadi and his team. Okay, all right. Moving away from that to uh, the new governors who are now confronted with huge pending bills. In this newspaper, it says the newly sworn in governors face a huge task of clearing pending bills and weeding out ghost workers as they begin serving their five year term. The county bosses also face an uphill task of transforming their counties by fulfilling their campaign pledges as well as meeting the expectation of their co constituents. Well, what do you make of this? Uh, it, is, it, is, it is truly a huge task mm -hmm. for, for, the, for the governors coming in, especially for the new governors and for the governors who weren't there for the previous five years. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I've seen most governors have said that they're going to do an audit on all the pending bills that are there so that now they are able to know the genuine bills and the ones that are not genuine mm -hmm. and and be able to proceed and pay. We, 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 we entrust that um, let not our public money go to waste. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, and what, what about the... Uh, the national uh, debt that we have for the incoming president? Um, uh, debts must be paid. Mm -hmm. However way they were taken and whatever purposes they were taken, mm -hmm. they're supposed to be paid. They're, they're the only um, little advice I can give into, to the new president who is going to come in yeah. is um, can we ask for restructuring of our loans and also Mm -hmm. um, let the loans that were taken be of good help to the one inch. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. All right. And uh, now, um, as we come to a close on this particular um, segment, I want you to uh, tell us about the what to expect during this period when during the election petition and the Supreme Court hearing when we will be, uh, you know after the verdict that is given in, c in the case that we are to return to the polls, how long should it take and when will the president be announced if in such a scenario? Um, uh, the constitution has guided us very well under uh, such scenarios. Mm -hmm. One, um, if the election is upheld, then the president-elect mm -hmm. His Excellency Dr. William Ruto, together with his uh, Deputy President-elect, Honorable Rigathi Gashagwa, mm -hmm. will be sworn in seven days, the next Tuesday after seven days of the election. That takes us to 13th of September. That is if the election is upheld? Yes, if it's upheld. Okay. If it's invalidated under Article 138 uh, of the Constitution, mm -hmm. then... The Supreme Court is going to order for a refresh, a, a, another election to be done, which the election should be done within 60 days. Mm -hmm. 60 days when we try to do a month, 60 days from uh, f if, if, if the judgment is going to come out on uh, 5th of September, mm -hmm. then so, uh, the commission has to do another election before the uh fifth fifth or fourth of november mm -hmm. yes all right and thereafter after mm. the elections are done within seven days after we expect a new president to be sworn in okay so the president will be sworn in either on 13th you said 13th yes of september or in the case that uh, we, we do a, rep a fresh election it will be around four plus november they're about in november, november the second week somewhere there all right. Okay. So as we come to a close finally on this, what what is to be expected, and what you know advice are you giving to the people? Um, uh, what is expected in our court is uh, we expect justice, mm -hmm. and uh, I do know and I do trust and believe in our judicial system, led by. Um, Honorable Chief Justice, I know they are going to serve Kenyans justice and um, 
Mm -hmm. I ask Kenyans to be calm. Let us continue with our normal work. Let us continue with our normal businesses. And by 5th of September, Kenya must move on. Mm -hmm. And I pray to our politicians to stop inciting Kenyans on, on uh, or speculating, speculating on the decision that is going to come out. Okay, thank you very much, Timothy, for coming and uh, sharing with us such uh, insights. We appreciate uh, your company. It was a pleasure having you. All right. Thank you. So that has been Timothy Mwenda, who's an advocate of the High Court of Kenya, talking to us about the current status of the country, what is going on, what to expect, and what not to some of the legal advice and what you know on the matters that are ongoing there that has been youth and politics so now we take a short break and then brian will be back with mcm stay with us